My name is Peter Waidegi. I'm uh, the chairman of KPRA, one of the many hats I wear. Uh, today, I'll be your moderator. I am the co chair of the Hekima University, proposed Hekima University Steering Committee. And uh, I will also introduce uh, the team uh, from Hekima uh, and also the Steering Committee. I will also uh, give everyone a chance here, since we are doing a little bit of networking also, uh, a chance to introduce yourself and uh, make friends. And the, the other one is we have a fundraising for the proposed university. Uh, they will make a presentation. So uh, that uh, you know, on the program that you have, we also have the pledge card on the bottom. Uh, so that as uh, you leave today, uh, if you like what you are hearing, uh, you become a, a, a patron, one of the friends of Hakima University. So my word is to welcome you and, uh, and say that education is really the tool of transformation. All the systems we have now seem to have outlived their usefulness. And it's very difficult to reorient them to begin serving the country today. So this is a university of transformation. It is going to handle things of the 21st century as we talk about it. We will tackle issues affecting humanity. We talk of what is poverty, what is unity amongst the people. How can we be innovative? How can we be creative? All these things are coming up afresh. We know that the Jesuits are giants in the education field. There are many universities all over the world. They have made an impact in the past. Many people have left Africa to go and study those universities. So we are really at a very, I don't know if I can call it this moment, when we have that university coming home, the first in Africa, at that level. And we are proud to be associated with it. For you coming in, we feel that you are the right track. You are making history today. History today. So what we are looking for is a relationship that you can have. Okay, you can donate, you can participate in a way, you can do it in kind, you can come and teach, as the uh, professor was talking about, and many programs that we are, we are running. I wanted to give some um, general examples. You can see how the world is, and I can pick uh, just last year, 2022, we had 900,000 students who took their form for examination. Those were 900,003 something for a bit. That's a number. Out of it, 200,000 could access university education. 200,000 probably. Which means 700,000 have been condemned to oblivion. And that has happened in the last years that we had. So, where do these 700,000 people go? Even if we say some can go to church and institutions, we are confident that about 500,000 each year are dumped out of the system. Because almost 400,000 are E. And if you are really grade E, even for you to employ a cleaner who brings grade E, you will know that this person is a joker. You may not engage them. You throw them out. So these 500,000 who have been thrown out by the system will not die. They remain in our country. Of course, they will grow to be parents. Then we begin penalizing the existing team for their survival. Get bursaries, and you see we are struggling with bursaries. It's not a big budget to support the people that we deliberately failed. Mm -hmm. If we are organized in managing education, those bursaries is what we should be moving towards eliminating. You have to pay for the health care. Now look at what is coming in. You must get money for them. Even when you hear the government will pay. What's the government? That means what you are taxing. Now those fellows we have failed, definitely we must pay for their survival. That is on the positive side. But these are the guys who have turned to crime. So we can't live well. We have to either kill them or do something. 
They are the ones who can join terrorism, look how our countries are going, and uh, so generally, the conversation around education needs to take a different turn. And we felt to get that turn, you can't talk in a vacuum. When we have an institution like this university, is when we can stage an argument constructively and tell them that let's make a turn around. This is what we are going to do. I know for the poor, they say this is university for the poor, but the poor has a, another connotation around it. But we we'll use it as a platform for social and economic transformation of our country. Big things will spring out of this university. So we are so proud that you have seen it when it's at infancy. It's at infancy. And once you are part of it, then we can delve into your experience, what you have seen, and how we can go forward. And we are glad today to have a very strong educationist, uh, Professor Naomi Damba, who will be introduced uh, later, really to show us more on sustainability. That is uh, one side. But I'm sure with people of this caliber and others, we can learn much, much more and start this journey of transformation. We say when the journey of a thousand miles must start with a small step. This is where we are. So I welcome you. Uh, during this team that came together, uh, steering this is really out to receive ideas from you, information from you, and we work together. We are not standing away as managers. We are infused with you to see how we can grow together and go to the next level. Thank you, uh, co chair and moderator, for the day. Please, we can move forward. Uh, God is good. And all the time, God is good. So this is a very brief presentation. I hope the projectors can put there at the back. It is the very brief presentation of the proposed Yekima University, who we are, where we are, and where are we heading to. And I'm doing this on behalf of the executive director, Dr. Elias Mukua. Our vision. We intend to prepare vision and ethical professionals who spur greater social transformation. Our mission is to form men and women committed to the advancement of innovative knowledge and technological entrepreneurship. And our motto shall be creative vision bearers. And then the theme is preparing students beyond the fourth industrial revolution. We want to be at the cutting edge of technological innovation. The philosophical behind, philosophy behind our system, we are convinced and we believe that technology can only advance in the transforming human development in ways never imagined before. Our economics, politics, religion, and the social life and innovations are all built on technological knowledge that enhances advancement. You can see briefly, uh, we are into the fourth industrial revolution. We want to invest in robotics, AI, and that master plan you see, that was on the day of the launching of the project officially. Uh, Bishop uh, Mohatia, uh, our socials, who was present, and Father Kifle, with a vision looking ahead to the, to the horizon, and that is what is guiding us. Next, we have the four pillars that guide this university project. Visionary, we want to promote creativity, lifelong learning, guided by Ignatian pedagogy that some of you have benefited from. Academic excellence, ethical, we want to care for the whole person, promote social justice and human dignity. We are inclusive. We begin with the local. We go regionally and globally and option for the poor as for the provincial said. And on the right, you see, we had a visit to Nakuru County. We are connected to the government, and we are connected to the local community, and they are part and part of our project and vision. And they, in fact, supported us when we were constructing the road system within the property where the university will be. In terms of justification, we carried out a lot of survey across the region, and we came up with understanding that we need to promote the fourth industrial revolution. We engage in AI, we promote automation, digital uh, technology, and job markets. 
and in order, of course, to make higher education compatible to the world in which we live. We are addressing the challenge of brain drain. As soon as our university graduates complete, they are taken over to the Western countries looking for greener pastures. And this continuously, this, the kind of disorients our nations and our economies. We train for, uh, again, we have an innovative pedagogy, which we need to promote lifelong learning and ground in research and transdisciplinary. As you notice, we also do community engagement in Molo, where we go every other month to teach them on financial literacy skills. Our schools are, of course, data science, which we promote uh, the career path for data analysts, for computer programming, coding, forecasting, and business analysts along the way. Then we have a School of Education Science, which we hope will help the science teachers to also invest in uh, technology, biochemical engineering, and also use the natural facilities that we have, especially in ethnobotany, but also train uh, education administrators and information technologists. Under the School of Business, we shall train business entrepreneurs, researchers, social entrepreneurs, business consultants, and some of you who are in this field will be great stakeholders and those who found NGOs. School of Engineering and Mechatronics, uh, we shall focus on robotics and then control system, electronics engineering and software engineering. The tasks ahead, we have already done the technical training for experts. We have curriculum development. We have completed almost 80% of that task. We have established the management team and we have the joint working group uh, with the Hikima University College, some of you know about it, and we already have the MOU that is awaiting to be signed. The tasks ahead, we also have MOUs with Baraka Agricultural College. We have Jesuit Worldwide Learning, an online training platform for refugees. We are in touch with the Sofia University or Buddha University, Hungary. We are proposing to run a cyber security program in March, and then we have been busy recruiting thematic leaders. We are busy resource mobilizing, and that's why we are here today. And then our main task is to keep raising awareness so that we get the university known. And in the next slide, you have the groundbreaking ceremony we had in Moro 2022. And we, of course, had also professional executive courses. And the next slide, leadership, uh, data science that is ongoing now, and then the strategic direction we want to launch cybersecurity again, as I said in March. Financial literacy program is ongoing. When we get sufficient funds, we shall create an innovation hub in Molo that can train uh, high school students, teachers in STEM, and people in the private sector. And of course, we shall continue the social entrepreneurship. What do you want us to, to support us in, I ask? We want you to support this one billion Kenyan shillings project, the first building that is required by the regulatory framework in order to apply for letter of interim authority. Our dream, you can see it before you, we need to raise 7.5 million US dollars. It looks a huge, massive fund, but we believe that with your support, this will happen. To put up a library, main administration building, put up a chapel, lecture rooms, and then the government will be impressed and give us the letter of interim authority to hit the ground and running. Thank you very much, and we wish you to look forward to your support and cooperation with us. God bless you, God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> and I think the LCMs will present a very short, brief video to kind of capture what we have and then we proceed. Thank you.
Oak springs eternal in the human breast. Remember these words from the poet Alexander Pope. What is the hope for many of African youth today? Quite simply, education. And yet so many of their education aspirations, educational hopes are frustrated and committed to, to building a Kima University which will provide an education to African youth, an education to get them out of poverty, an education that will create new innovators, leaders and entrepreneurs. And so we ask you to, to join us in this effort to share your, your skills, your education, your resources, and together we can bring new hope to the youth of Africa. Percent of the children in this part of the world who have managed to access secondary school education do not go through to tertiary education, 36%. That's almost two in every five children who would have gone on to uh, university do not make it. So, we are not about to say that we have enough universities in the sub-region. So we want to meet the, the, the rest of our population halfway by providing at least one more university. And it's not going to be one university among many others. It's going to be a Jesuit university, I'm sure. But our unique um, element in Jesuit education is that we form the whole person. It's a holistic kind of education. Despite the, the challenges of that time, I admire that he took off some responsibilities which had been pending for a long time to come to fruition. And one of them was this university, which was talked of here and there and so on. But he came in and that was the first mission when he was making us to have actually weekly meetings to have this dream realized. Now with that bravery, the took it on with is where we are saying we take the challenge really before even the end of his mandate he should be talking to the first students of the university to show that this program has been realized so father jisito we are with you on this all the way yeah. now i'll make a very little introduction of professor noah midamba because he's a very well-known educationist in our country He's a scholar by excellence. He has been in Africa, at our home here, and even abroad. His knowledge spans in many other areas. You have seen him even on the media, making social commentaries, and advising even the citizenry how some things can be handled. He's a person who has a wide knowledge of experience in matters education, matters governance, leadership, and he has been giving these talks in particular areas asking us to take up this legacy and begin the journey of transformation. So you could have met him at different uh, sections because he chairs a number of boards, he's a number of committees, and in particular, I think we must have met him as the vice chancellor of KCA University, which he ran for the full term and left it as one of the model private universities in Kenya. So without saying much more, uh, let us welcome Professor Noah Midamba to give us this, this presentation on this side. Today, I want to talk uh, to you about, uh, move to the next page. Uh, uh, I want to talk to you about um, Biko. Next page. Uh, Biko is moving so soon. I want you to uh, talk about the purpose of a university foundation. Uh, purpose of a university foundation. Then I want to guide you through eight steps uh, that it takes, uh, eight steps that it takes in order to create a foundation. Then I'm going to give you most questions that most people ask. Because so far in my life, I've raised a hundred and $50 million uh, in my past life. And, and, and while Reggie and I were together in so many fundraising, I'm even right now involved in a major fundraising in my uh, community in Kindu Bay uh, that is going to revamp the entire Oscar uh, that 
my parents gave uh, 200 acres to Seventh Day Adventist in 1926. They built a beautiful hospital. Then over years it went down. And then I went back there and I said, I'm giving you notice to Bakit uh, so we can rebuild the hospital. And uh, right now we're raising money and raising money very fast uh, through the network of our friends. And so the question, when you stop and think about it, is why would anybody give you money? That is the big question. Why would I put my money into your enterprise? You know, uh, we're already here has, has very sweet mouth. <laughs> Our... <laughs> <laughs> Our friend from Nigeria, uh, Dr. Manefo, said, this one right here uh, can sell you sand instead of, uh, instead of gold. Uh, because he knows, he knows the, the, the words to use. But in the, um, the dynamic within the university system is that you're looking at faculty and student. You're looking at staff. You're looking at alumni. You're looking at community members and your relationship are with them. Uh, you hear uh, Family Bank is here uh, today. Uh, my father was, by the way, uh, was the first to get, uh, find a job for uh, your president, uh, Titus. A uh, very good friend, a very good friend of mine. And so you have to have that kind of relationship uh, with Mwangi where Mwangi knows who you are, uh, where he feels for what you are, where um, he knows that, that whatever you're doing is going to be a reciprocal relationship, isn't it, Patricia? With his uh, mission, with this mission, with what he's trying to achieve as a, as a bank. And now we have a big, big market in East Africa. Uh, there are eight countries uh, with about 500,000 uh, of 500 million uh, residents of the East Africa community. That's a huge market. And therefore, it is important for you to create a niche, uh, a niche such that you constantly bring these people together. At Kent State, uh, KCA, uh, we established an annual dinner, uh, black tie affair, where everybody come. We have very specific goal, and, and those goals are met one way or another. We have a, a target of the kind of money that we need to raise. And so in Kent State University, we created what's called Town and Gone a Committee, which I chair uh, when I was vice uh, president. And in this Town and Gone, all the, 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 the uh, uh, real estate, uh, all the businesses that surround the university are part of this. You know, all the banks that we deal with directly are part of this committee. So every single time they hear progress we are making and the challenges that we are having. And so they're completely part of the university community. Uh, here um, in Kenya, when faculty talk to you, um, sometimes you say, where are they from? Uh, because they look like they come from a different planet. You know, they talk different language. And that the community, there is no engagement, uh, you know, in any of our universities uh, with, the, with the people. And therefore, the people are saying, uh, you know, why should we give so much money uh, to this institution? They're wondering. In America, almost every university in America has a foundation. Almost every university in America has town gone relationship. The president of the university spend a lot of time in the community explaining future program, what we're going through, and the goals that are setting, which is going to benefit everybody. So the whole community is part of the university. And uh, particularly uh, in a case like Kent State, where uh, it dominates the entire community of Kent State, they wanted me to run as a mayor. 
of Kent, that one guy. <laughs> yeah, we lucky to be down, but we wanted to run for uh, something. Now, the purpose of University Foundation. Uh, Biko, you got there? Okay. Several things that, uh, that need. It's an umbrella uh, for receiving private gift. Uh, foundation, the business people, some of the business people, some of the rich people, don't want you to announce that they give you money. Okay? They're giving you money for a very specific purpose. But they don't want you to go out there and say, oh, Rockefeller uh, family, this is not Rockefeller Foundation, gave us so much money. And then everybody is going to come to Rockefeller. So the purpose is to create an umbrella, uh, an umbrella team which receive the gift. Secondly, philanthropic uh, support of student, faculty, research, academic, vacation, what we have just seen on, on the thing. You see, once you generate, once this, this is important to my country, uh, this is important to my family, then you are going to say maybe 10% of my salary is going to go every month for this, or 10% of our family uh, endowment fund is going to go to support this, because this is important for our future generation. You see the connection? That relationship has to be there uh, before anybody give you, uh, give you any penny. Uh, then the foundation is set up to advise uh, uh, and guide donors, uh, connect with their passion, what is it they want. Then engage alumni, volunteers, life of college. I went back to KCA, back to the time university was founded. And I went back to the founder of the university. And I had had to talk with them one by one. And consensus was, uh, Prof, we want you to build Harvard. Yeah? Well, that's a noble goal. But I said, we may not build Harvard at this time. But we'll set the university on a trajectory to build similar Harvard in the future. It's going to take 100 years. Uh, I don't care. Harvard has taken 400 years. But it will be in that trajectory, an environment where people don't swindle money, an environment where people support each other, a culture, a culture that people come together. Uh, people don't look at each other if you, you sow this tribe, this tribe. Uh, what have you, and you make so much money and make little money. No. So that's the culture that I left at KCA. But it took me five years uh, to create that kind of environment. And so a lot of what is happening in public university, everybody wants to jump in fundraising. But fundraising for what? So you can teach me geology, you know, that kind of thing. Geology is important. There is no I, I, I uh, uh, from time to time, I tell Magoa that there's no, Magoa, Magoa called them stupid subject. They're not stupid subject. Everything that we teach at university, open your mind to a new idea. But it is the way that you value right now the graduates that come in the university. What happened to them? Thousands of them are on the street looking for jobs. You know, so, uh, the young man behind, uh, uh, Steve Biko, uh, is my nephew. Uh, he's a cybersecurity specialist. We send him to school. And from there, we teach him to find himself and be clear what is it that he's going to do. And KCA was set up in such a way that the last five years I was there, we produce a millionaire every year. Those kids have big business right now. Every year, uh, we produce a millionaire. And so my hope with the new team that is there right now, that, that trajectory will continue. And mind you, the millionaire we produce come back and give back to the university. You know, that is very obvious. That's what Harvard is about. Harvard is a, is a community. You cannot just apply 
and be admitted in Harvard. They will ask, did your grandfather go here? <laughs> uh, is your father, your mother, what relationship? If you don't have that relationship, you're put on. It doesn't matter how you qualify or whether you are Sultan's uh, son, you're put on aside until they admit other people they want because they don't need money. They can run university for years to come without any money uh, coming in. So partnering, uh, institutional, addressing major societal issues is what, why people give money into the university. The other thing is the business community want you to protect their financial information. Uh, Titus, uh, family bank, uh, don't want you to go out there and divulge all the information. Uh, when um, uh, when uh, equity uh, uh, was creating um, this, uh, what, what you call those children? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he spent a lot of time with me, uh, talking to me. Yeah, he came in my office, we had lunch, we talked. You know, and I told him this is the biggest idea that any businessman has ever created in this country. And I said, go with it full time, uh, create structure, and make sure that it works. Because this is what's going to propel uh, this, uh, this bank for years to come, isn't it? Now tell me who's doing the same thing like Mwangi. You know, uh, no good. And it is Mwangi, uh, you remember, uh, you remember when uh, Standard Bank and uh, Barclays Bank say, if you have 20,000, they close, we don't need you. And Mwangi said, uh, if you have potatoes and chicken, <laughs> come and open <laughs> an account, isn't it? <laughs> He's thinking faster than we read. <laughs> so I like that man. I, I, you know, we, we talk, he's my friend, and, uh, and I like the kind of things that he does and the way he has raised the awareness in this country. That is the way Dangoti work in Nigeria. That is the same kind of uh, mentality. So we have it all here in Africa. We have it. If Congo, uh, DFC Congo, has $24 trillion of mineral, and the US has $25 trillion of gross national product. Who, who, what do we have here in Africa? And can you see how powerful we can become? And therefore, this is very, very good. And so we need to create um, the endowment. We need to create endowment fund, which is separate from the university. Because people, uh, Africans, and particular Kenya, uh, Nigeria, have now come to a point you cannot trust these guys with your money. You know, <laughs> you don't know if you're going to use it for marriage, you know, and for other things, and then give you a different story. You cannot. But these people, their foundation is responsible for the giver for all the people, fiduciary responsibility. And so it looks very good because every time they need information, they get it right away. If you ask the general university system to give you university, say we have not met, uh, the meeting will take place next week, then we'll get back to you. And so uh, the, to just summarize here, establish credibility, muscle volunteers, foster lifelong income uh, engagement, increase investment potential, and curtail political intrusion. You know, university has a lot of political intrusion, uh, particularly public university. Uh, members of parliament, I can tell you one, uh, one cabinet secretary now uh, came to me and said, Prof, uh, what, can I have my MBA in eight months? <laughs> And uh, I say, yes, you can have your MBA. I estimate one, uh, one and a half year, you can have your MBA. Because we, get, we put K, uh, KCA on credit accumulation. So every time you come, you measure your complete 
four credit, ten credit, and the faster you complete them, the, the faster you're ready to graduate. And so I told him, add one and a half years you can graduate, which means you have to go to school in the daytime, you have to go in the evening, and you have to go on the weekend. And he looked at me and said, Prof, you're the VC, you can do anything. Yes, yes, ma'am. That's what he said to me. And there are people, Kenya, right now we are sitting, who got their, uh, including PhDs. They're called doctors. They got it behind. They put a bag of money. You have not become a, a, a doctor. <laughs> Now, then, then, then the next thing is steps, which, which are uh, regular in order to create, which you develop guidelines. What are the guidelines? Sample fundraising. Uh, for instance, the fundraising team, we have raised right now a hundred and, uh, and, uh, and 40 million for um, Kindle Mission Hospital. Uh, we want to raise 200 million in order to do that kind of thing. But we created a criteria where we're saying, don't use this podium uh, for political message. It doesn't matter, you can be a governor, we have governors, we have senators, we have all those people. But they cannot come in and say, oh my God, here's a 10 of people who's going to support you. Uh, we just take your name out and ask you to take your money and go. Uh, because we have to focus on what we are doing. And I can tell you, I, it is so exciting for me to go out there and see, see old ladies uh, bringing their chicken, uh, their tomatoes, and, 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 and their eggs to sell in order to support the hospital. You see what I mean? So it's, com it's completely community. And so then state the case. The case which are which here, here on the mission, which I saw, a very good case. This is the gap. That is what the communities are looking for. And now, when I talk about community, you, can only, you cannot only look at Kenya. The Finland people have billions of dollars, which are stored for years to come. It is said that if... Finland stop, the world stop right now. Finland can lead and manage their country for a hundred years without worry. So what they're doing, they're taking that money to invest in other areas, uh, like in Africa right now, uh, so that they can get better interest and better awareness and all that. Those guys have money. You have to justify what do you say that you need. A lot of people in America have a lot of money. Again, when you approach them, uh, like in the case of uh, uh, Kindle Mission of Story, we approach the American, uh, American churches, American Seventh-day Adventist church. I go there and make a case, and I say, we need so much dollar uh, from this church. And then we go to another. And so when those dollars are arriving, uh, people say, oh my God, this is wonderful. So that is the way we are raising money. So every single one of us, uh, you know, Trump has given America a very bad name. But Waregi and I lived there for a long time. I know there are a lot of very, very good people in America who are committed for something good. And so a case of uh, an American old lady who's left with a lot of money and somebody said, kids are going hungry in Kenya. And there are 700, how many? 700,000 who are not going to go in school because of this. That old lady will write a check and a big check because you've given a reason and a cause, and they will be very proud. So we cannot just look at um, micro. We cannot just look at our region. We cannot just look at our people. You have to go out of the box and look at the greater world and say, where is it? Is it in Canada? Uh, is it in Australia? Is it in America? But where in America? 
not uh, sometimes not in New York. You have to go to the hinterland. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life and sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, your eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, Show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus, O merciful, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. To get Hail Holy Queen as your skiza tune, send skiza followed by code 7381. Uh, so, find the startup money. Uh, which you need to start before in order to create a foundation and then uh, then go to uh, then go to all the ingredient needed and Kenya is a setup for uh, for that kind of foundation it's a legally written so you have to go with that now several common questions that people are raising how long have college and university foundation been around I, I talk about Harvard University, 1636. Uh, but Indiana, uh, Kansas University in Indiana, uh, started that in 1891. They're not one of the richest university, but they conceptually put together a very well-grounded uh, foundation with all the information. Our college's university foundation completely independent from the institution. Now, this is a very critical question. One, the foundation has fiduciary responsibility to the giver, uh, to Mwangi, to family bank, and they're separate from the university money, and they have a separate board. And so this separate board reports to the university, but it also report to the giver. But so if university need money, the department need money, how much money they need, they have to justify to the foundation. That's what I had to do at Kent State University. I'm a member of the foundation, but I had to justify what that money is going to do. So the giver feel very comfortable that everything they have given is accountable. You see what I mean? So you cannot mix, mix it up. So KCA, Strathmore, we are foundation, separate from the university. And particular when uh, board members are from the banks and private sector, then you give it a really good room to separate it from the rest of the uh, university politics, university this, university that. So, that has to be done. Next question. Why do donors make gifts to colleges and university and foundation instead of the institution itself? Now you're telling me uh, that come and give money to university in Nairobi. And the faculty are fighting the union said this and this. And so why? Why would I give money? But when university, there are not a, a lot, I used to tell Magoa, there are a lot of good things are happening in this university. But nobody knows about it because they're fighting. That's all you hear. You know? And so the foundation gleaned the best out of the university you know, the programs, and then use powerful marketing to project that image to the giver. And so the giver is getting the kind of information that public don't have, because all we have is this. People are on strike, 
this and this happened. I was telling my God, don't build apartments. You know, I'm the advisor of, uh, uh, of Econ uh, Corporation. Econ Corporation is building some of the best university apartments. But if you go to University of Nairobi, uh, the tech Asuka and divide this little room into four. So they rent it out to people in the street. The students. And when you look at the kitchen, <laughs> uh, say, wow, this is where students live. But the same money, pay the same money and go into Econ uh, Corporation rooms, uh, Kwetu homes. It's, it's beautiful. And it's a place where Japanese students want to go, American students want to go, international students want to go. But they will not live in the apartment, the university in Nairobi. So we got Magoa and the rest of the people convinced about a uh, Kwetu home. So Kwetu is building 2,000 uh, resident hall uh, near university in Nairobi. And so you have to create the image uh, that the public will give the public reason. How are colleges, university foundation accountable? Well, I think I just talk a lot about that. They're accountable uh, to you. Uh, they're accountable to the university. And a lot of times, like senior vice president of university sit on the foundation. The president of the university sit on, the vice chancellor will sit on the foundation. But they have no more voice uh, than this banker, uh, uh, like this banker who is sitting here, who is a member. They have no voice because everything is rational and accountable. And that is the way we need to go. Are colleges, university foundation the same as private foundation? No, they are not. I can put for anything. I said, well, Reggie is in charge and uh, my daughter and somebody else, and they ditch out money, okay, the way we want. But public foundation, everything about university foundation is public. So it has to be treated like public. There is audit trail, uh, there are procedures, uh, how it's governed, and everything is done in a proper way. Uh, private colleges, university foundation, in America, Almost every university has a foundation. Uh, we already talked about uh, uh, which one was that, that college in, in Cleveland? Uh, Tri-C. Tri uh, uh, yeah, Tri-C created a corporate college. And that corporate college has a foundation. Uh, we were meeting at the annual uh, black tie affair every time, the, the entire community. And everyone is giving. And so what I want to say, uh, Finally, is we need to think out of the box here in Africa. Yeah, Kenya, uh, uh, Kenya is blessed by really um, forward-looking, vibrant. Uh, my students, are, you know, they come to me with ideas that you cannot. I was not called vice chancellor, by the way. I was called captain. You know, Captain, you won't demonstrate this idea to you. One idea they demonstrate to me right now is being developed in Israel, which is going to become a big thing in the, in the security. And so I have registered their team, working with the team in Israel to establish that idea. So this is all coming out of here. You see what I mean? We're blessed. We are a country, uh, you know, we fight, we are politic and everything. Sometimes I, I, I hardly watch local news. We appear on, on KTN every week uh, to talk about national security. But I don't watch, I just don't watch local news. I read papers every day so that I can lean and figure out. But I don't want to hear people, you know, screaming at each other and yelling at each other. Yet people are suffering. So the issue is, let's create the finest institution in the world. 
where Japanese want to send their children, where South Koreas want to send their children, where Malaysia want to come and send their children, such that we are not running to go to England, we are not running to go to Malaysia, we are not running to go to America. By the year uh, 2050, which is not a long way, it is projected that one out of four people in the world would be a black person. You see what I mean? One out of four. Because you Europeans, huh? they either. <laughs> 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 you get it? <laughs> you get it? <laughs> Say, don't interpret what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, their birth rate is going down. America is coming. Uh, the only people producing children in America are recent immigrants. The rest flat. Uh, the uh, China, which has the largest number of people right now, has come to a peak. India has also come to a peak. And it is only in Africa where we projected to grow very fast. Who are these people? You know, they're going to influence the entire world. That's the reason England is re recruiting nurses to go. And that's the reason um, uh, Chancellor Parker of, uh, of Germany admitted all these immigrants that were coming from Syria from Hebrew. Because we are going to provide the skills and the bulk of work in the world. And therefore, we have to produce the institution here that will meet that world you know, tomorrow. And this is no joke. And it's, it's moving so fast like IR, artificial intelligence, which is coming. You cannot use artificial intelligence based on everybody analysis, without human. Okay? We can't run the world without human. And therefore, that's what I would like to leave you with, uh, to think through, and, uh, and of course I'll be around uh, uh, to consult with you pro bono. Yeah. <laughs> And I think the university has that vision to take the list of us to be significant and to add value. Uh, do you have a question for Dr. Minama? A question for Professor before I bring the Hakim team back. And, uh, and uh, how many of you from this day to Dr. Minama would like to contribute to the Hakim University Foundation? <laughs> if, you, if you'd like to contribute to the Hakim like myself, please have your hand. How many of you like to support what Hakim is doing? Here? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chama, you see your, your, your community now. I also like what Professor said. It's a community. You try to see the corporate college, Key Bank has an office there. The Water Department has an office there. The Duca has an office there. So the, the college is still training people that are working in the marketplace. But it's interesting in Kenya, you will not go to the university and find Mabati Lori. Uh, department, <laughs> or talent puppet, or even family bank team, or their marketing team. But this is what we actually need. So if you don't have a question for uh, Professor Midamba, uh, let me bring, I would want to say to say a word or so before I bring you to uh, chairman, because he has visited, he's gone to America, he's in charge of the entire Africa, and uh, he's our Secretary General. So I would want him just to give an overview, and just to, uh, to just let us know what his focus is and how you get to that, to this, uh, he called the fourth uh, industrial revolution. Can you wrap it up before we give back to the okay. uh, Professor, thanks for those ideas. I don't know. You said you're, you're working pro bono. Is the pro bono beginning after here or it includes, uh, uh, are we going to be charged fees for, for these ideas? Um, okay, okay. Uh, I, at the beginning, as, as uh, uh, Dr. Nyambega said, at the beginning when I was a new provincial, I used to attend the weekly meeting and I was very vocal inside there. 
but I soon realized that fundraising has become a science. People get PhDs in this thing. So I, I discreetly withdrew. The, the, the conversation became too, too complicated for me. So I'm here to thank you for the ideas you're putting together to make us work. I would like to thank you for the money in advance. Uh, that's the bottom line. They call it the bottom line. Thank you for the money already. Uh, the millions we are going to get from you. And we promise we shall account for every shilling or dollar or euro, whatever currency. I know there are some Swiss people among us here. Uh, we shall account for every penny you give us. The second point I want to make is, uh, I already hinted on it, who are the Jesuits? Uh, I don't want you to leave and go home and talk about Jesuits without knowing. Jesuits are men, Catholics, priests and brothers, with a missionary bent, and they are religious. So they take vows. Um, never mind some people saying that there's only Jesuit nun among us. Uh, <laughs> constitutionally, there are no women who are Jesuits. Not even, not even Catherine. Sometimes she walks like a Jesuit, but she's, <laughs> she's, uh, she's not a Jesuit. Uh, not even Beatrice. She attends mass uh, every morning. No, she's not a Jesuit. Now, anyway, they are... The Pope is a Jesuit. I think that's, that's enough description. So some people who doubt whether we are Catholic, the Pope is a Jesuit. Uh, um, in East Africa, we are around 300. We are reaching 300 very soon to serve in those uh, theoretically six countries, but we are not in Sudan because of the war. But as soon as the war dies down, there are two men willing to go into Khartoum. Uh, so we are in these five countries. We do things like education at all levels. In Tanzania, we come all the way from kindergarten to secondary school, to tertiary institutions. This will be the first university of Eastern African province. Uh, so we want to, to do it well. Actually, this university was commissioned by the superior general of the Jesuits in Rome. There are very few initiatives that have been commissioned, commanded from the center. Here he wrote us a letter in, Feb was it February 2022, 2023, where he said, I want you to, 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 write, to, to do a university. And a few months later on, I was in a meeting which he was chairing, and he said to the rest of the universities in the world, we have around 250 universities in the world. He said, we are going to learn from East Africa how to do university going forward. So we, we bear a big responsibility of creating universities, the model of a university that will take us ahead. So um, we do education, we do uh, uh, parishes, of course, like Kangemi St. Joseph's and a few others in the, in the sub-region. We do youth work, we, we look after refugees, um, uh, we do communication. Loyola Communications is part of that. Uh, but also there is Radio Quizera in Ngara, northwestern Tanzania. We do communication. We do retreat work, Mwangaza. If you need to refresh your mind, uh, you need to reset. We do all kinds of retreat work and formation. Um, the average age is 42. Uh, the young ones in this room are saying, oh, these guys are ancient. Uh, but globally, we are among the youngest provinces. Uh, in the, as the uh, professor was saying, Jesuits, the number of Jesuits is only growing in Africa. Uh, Asia used to be a competitor. They have plateaued. And the rest of the world, they are going down. So the future of Jesuit education also lies with Africa. We have to do it right. Uh, we have to, to continue with the momentum that other Jesuit universities like Georgetown University, Loyola Chicago, and so on. The level at which they are, we have to maintain it here. Um... The last thing is um, to talk about the, I, I think that's why you asked me to talk. Eh? I've finally come around to it. Um, in the first three industrial revolutions, Africa's contribution is missing. In one of the industrial revolutions, slave trade was used to bring in the human resource, but at a very low level. So industrial revolutions, if they are not handled properly, they can be engineers of injustice. In this current one, 
Some say fourth, but some are already pointing towards the fifth. We have what it takes to contribute at the table. Especially two things. We have age. The young people are with us. Another thing, resources. Two days ago, I think it was announced officially that Colton was discovered in parts of Kenya and huge amounts of it. So we are coming to the table with resources. Congo, I think, has 65% of the coltan in the whole world. And now when we talk of electric cars and so on, where we are going. So Africa has to contribute. So when we build a university like this, we want our people to go in with a real contribution. We don't want uh, South Koreans and Malaysians to come here from or Singapore to, do our, to run our businesses. That's why we are positioning ourselves to build a university that is not backward looking. Of course, we take history very seriously and culture, but we want a university that will look forward and make, from day one, make a sound contribution. I, I think um, the rest has been said in the slides that preceded. Yeah, I want to emphasize, it's going to be a regional university. And someone asked me, why Molo? Very briefly, we were looking for a place to put a university. And Bishop Mohatia caught up with us. I said, you, you, you need land for a university, 75 acres in Molo, free of charge, take it. Later on, we went back and said, how come you gave us land and land in Molo? He said, because of the unrest that Kenya faced. Molo has been forgotten. Sometimes when you say Molo, people grow goose pimples. They say, what did you just say, Molo? and you want to put a university there, are our kids safe? Precisely, that's why we need a university in Molo. Because it will capture the character of the entire region. This is a very, very destabilized region. Stretching from Eastern Congo, Somalia is at the verge of a war, Ethiopia is coming out of one, South Sudan, there are pockets of unrest. In the north of Mozambique, you know the, the al Haida are, are working in the north of Mozambique. I mean, Great Lakes is a synonym for unrest. So Molo captures it for us softly, softly, because it's now a bit settled. Uh, you never know what happens tomorrow, but that's why we need a university there. It's going to be a university that I want to repeat against the advice of so many people inside here. It's a university of the poor. Yeah. We, we keep telling poor people that, you know, the key to the future is education. After that, we raise the fees. <laughs> we are dangling their future. Then we say, no, but you can't access. This university needs to work a way out through foundations, for example, so that a poor kid can say, yeah, it was mine to refuse. I had an opportunity and I refused. So there's going to be a lot of, we're going to have an advancement office, as I, used to, I usually say, on steroids. Money must be there to ensure the education of poor people, especially the, the, the ones who are motivated and they are, they are talented. We shouldn't let them rot. Those are the ones who are going to invent things and discover drugs against all kinds of cancer, those poor ones. So I think with those very few words, I will leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, because Lena has one of our guests, she's going to be in the petrol with us. But let me have the steering committee here. And those petrols, the petrols for those, what do you want to call it from Lena? Yes. Because uh, we have a guest today, uh, that is going to be part of this illustrious team. You know, some very good people start to be recognized. When somebody gives you money, I think it's good to say thank you and recognize you. Um, she's here on behalf of her spouse who was uh, um, away on duty, but he has promised to come um, the next uh, breakfast in Mundaiga. So um, they are from East Africa, Portland, Cement. So could I just invite her so she can uh, declare their gift? <laughs> God is good, all and all the time. All so as Delina has said, I'll work 
uh, with her to support the foundation with uh, a minimum of maybe 300 bags of cement. Mm -hmm. If God wills, then you can do more. God bless you. Thank you. Okay. Our next breakfast will be, I think, on 27th of, uh, of February. It will be at Modaiga. Early morning. This time we will not keep you late. Uh, as we are continuing to stand here, uh, I will ask the dean to say hello and give uh, Dr. Anyabana to give the vote of thanks. Just say hello because you are here, and then uh, your colleague can say a vote of thanks. Uh, do you, would you like to, us to stand or sit down? Uh, no, you stand. You stand. <laughs> so, uh, Prof, I uh, understand there's a governor in town. Yes. Yeah. And uh, all the guests, uh, first of all, my apologies, I have this flu, and uh, the best practice is when you have flu, say one word, take off. Yes. Don't stay with people. So uh, that's what I'll precisely do. Thank you so much, Mr. Wairegi and uh, Prof. I love the American stories. The only story I used to teach my student is about uh, Martin Luther Jr. King because uh, he believed that even when you have no money, you can change something. And you know the black Americans suffered one problem that they couldn't vote. They were told, your problem is not uh, voting or anything. Your problem is poverty. So we will give you schools. And they said, no, 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 no. Our problem is actually we need to vote. So thank you so much. Uh, that gives us confidence. And thanks, everyone. Thanks, the committee. And to each one of you, thank you so much. So after this, I'll take off because that's the best practice, isn't it? So I don't want to transmit to anyone. Thank you. Thank you, the director of the proposed university. And I extend the same word of gratitude for those who have turned up. Uh, I will say two things just to connect what we said about the university. As we put it in place, we took different models that were working simultaneously. There were groups that were forming the programs that we are going to teach. Those are the degree programs, and they formed the four, which we have talked about. There is engineering, there is education science, uh, we have business, and now data science. Those are more contemporary programs that we want to start so that the commission can launch us. Another community was working on construction, dealing with the, with the buildings we'll have and the land. There's uh, another committee working on relations to publicize the university as it were, and another team trying to see how we can mobilize resources. And this is a team that is gathering us here. So we know that other members are participating, but we are doing this for the fundraising. We want to realize this dream uh, institution. So you have some papers you are given, which have a place to tear actually off, uh, where you can pledge or where you can donate. Already you have gotten a, donate, a donation of, uh, what do you say, 500 bucks or? <laughs> That one can be marked straight away as a donation. But of course, we are not prepared for this. If you have something you can pledge, it will be picked there. They'll contact you, and we see what we can uh, raise towards this. I know there are millionaires, we are told, in the house, and there are others who can do something. Uh, that's the purpose of those uh, printouts. Just write what you can to support this uh, great initiative that we have to create this university. I thank the speakers we had today. We got it from the provincial who put across the dream of this institution uh, as a place which is conflict filled, which is putting us backwards. And now this institution can be a source of healing for us and a transformation point he put there as a university uh, for the poor. And the region of the Eastern province touches these countries that are actually in turmoil. Even our country is now on a balance. We hope we'll settle and uh, move forward. And uh, we got it uh, from Professor that in a very short while, in the entire world, that one in every four people is going to be a black person. So what will this black stake to the world? War and chaos and poverty. All these blacks will take forward 
a new agenda to bring a new world order of harmony and progress. And let's make our university be the one uh, contributing to that. So we appreciate very sincerely Professor Midamba uh, coming for this event. We put our main fundraising at June, at some moment in June. So we said, how do we grow towards June? So we began with what we call power breakfast. It was Professor not very powerful? It was not very powerful at that. So we have power breakfast where we initiate this and get some people to contribute and move ahead. Some groups have done great things, feel challenged. The power of one makes a difference. Try to go to sleep and one mosquito is under the net, you'll see how you wake up the next day. So your contribution is not meaningless. It will have an impact on what you're doing. Give us ideas, contact us, our addresses are there. We see how we can mobilize ourselves. Invite your friends and the other, and we hope in the next month, we'll double our number, if not triple it for that breakfast, so that by June, we can see what we'd have done. And at that time, we want to start the construction of that main classroom where we can be seen as a university. Now we have land. Someone is helping us put a residence for the fathers to stay. Some people are helping with one item and the other. But we want to do a construction where people can see the university now at least in action as we move forward. So I thank you very sincerely for sparing your time and more so the contribution you are going to make. Thank you very much for this morning. Asante Nisano, you can clap for our speaker and then we wind up. Yeah, we have a presentation. Uh, please, if you can make the presenter to our speaker. I know a few people who have better prayers than me. But <laughs> let's do this. May we please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty, ever-living God, we thank you for the gift of life, the life of each one of us and the life of all of us collectively. We thank you for the generosity, the presence, the goodwill, the beneficence of these men and women gathered here. We thank you for the idea of the university that has gathered us, and we pray in advance for all the beneficiaries, those who will get certificates and degrees from it, but also those who will benefit in there, whose lives will become better because there is a university in the neighborhood. We thank you for the peace we enjoy in this country, and we pray for more peace in the sub-region. Bless us, bless our day, our weekend, and all the days that are to come. Bless this effort in the months that follow. We make this and all our prayers through Christ our Lord, Amen. our Father. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Saint Ignatius of Loyola. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us with his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us praise the Lord. Thank you.